The pelvis is formed of four bones sacrum, coccyx, and two hip bones. The sacrum is a wedge shaped bone made up of five fused bones. The prominent upper margin of the sacrum is called sacral promontory. The sacrum has two wings, known as ala of the sacrum. The coccyx is a small triangular bone that articulates with the sacrum. Each hip bone is formed of three fused bones, ilium, ischium, and the pubis. The ilium is the upper part of the hip bone. The upper border of the ilium is called iliac crest. When you place a hand on the hip, it rests on the iliac crest. The anterior concave surface of the iliac bone is called iliac fossa. The anterior border of the ilium has two bony prominences. Uh, they are not clear in this view. Here in a lateral view, we can see them clearly. The upper one is called anterior superior iliac spine. The lower prominence is called anterior inferior iliac spine. Ischium is the thick lower part of the hip bone. It has two important bony prominences. One is a small pointed triangular projection called ischial spine. The other one is a broader prominence known as ischial tuberosity. During sitting, body weight is placed on the ischial tuberosity. The pubis forms the anterior part of the hip bone. It has a body, superior ramus, and inferior ramus. The two pubic bones articulate anteriorly together at the symphysis pubis. Sacroiliac joint is a synovial joint, forming articulation between the ilium and the first two sacral vertebrae on either side. The sacrococcygeal joint is a fusion of the sacrum and the coccyx. The symphysis pubis is a cartilaginous joint between the two pubic bones in the midline. Joints are supported with ligaments. The sacroiliac joint is supported by sacroiliac ligaments. The sacrococcygeal joint is supported by sacrococcygeal ligament. The anterior sacrococcygeal ligament is some fibers that descend from the anterior surface of the sacrum to the anterior surface of the coccyx. The symphysis pubis is supported by four ligaments. On the upper border, superior pubic ligament. On the lower border, the inferior pubic ligament, also known as arcuate ligament. On the anterior surface, the anterior pubic ligament. On the posterior surface, the posterior pubic ligament. There is also the anterior longitudinal ligament, which runs along the anterior surface of all the vertebrae, including the sacrum. This woman had hysterectomy five years ago. Now she presents with prolapse of the vault. One of the operations described for management of vault prolapse is called sacrocolpopexy. Sacro means sacrum, colpo means vagina, and the pexy means fixation. This means the fixation of the vault to the sacral promontory, and sutures are taken in the anterior longitudinal ligament 
in front of the sacral promontory. Another two ligaments are attached to the sacrum. The sacrospinous ligament is a triangular ligament with apex attached to the ischial spine, while the base is attached to the lateral border of the coccyx and the fifth sacral vertebra. The sacrotuberous ligament is another triangular ligament with the apex attached to the ischial tuberosity while the base is attached to the lateral border of the sacrum and the coccyx. Before ligaments, these curvatures are called greater sciatic notch and lesser sciatic notch. The ligaments will convert them into openings in the pelvic wall called the greater sciatic foramen and the lesser sciatic foramen. These foramens form an exit and entry to some structures between inside and outside the bones. I will give an example. The common iliac artery divides inside the pelvis into external iliac artery and internal iliac artery. The internal iliac artery will divide into anterior and posterior divisions. The anterior division will give many branches and ends as two terminal branches. The smaller of the terminal branches is called the internal pudendal artery. The internal pudendal artery leaves the pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen, behind the sacrospinous ligament, just medial to the tip of the ischial spine. The pudendal nerve also will leave the pelvis beside the internal pudendal artery. This relation between ischial spine and the internal pudendal artery and the pudendal nerve has an important clinical application. During pudendal nerve block, palpate the ischial spine. The local anesthetic is injected immediately medial to the ischial spine, about 1 cm medial to the ischial spine, to affect the pudendal nerve. But don't forget to aspirate first to ensure that the artery is not involved. Sacrospinous fixation is another operation described for the management of vault prolapse. During sacrospinous fixation, the prolapsed vault is sutured to the sacrospinous ligament. Sutures are placed approximately two finger breadths medial to the ischial spine. I mean about two to three centimeter from the ischial spine which roughly corresponds to the mid-portion of the ligament to avoid injury to the artery and the nerve. Anteriorly, there is an important ligament known as inguinal ligament. It extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. A triangular extension from the medial part of the inguinal ligament will form the lacunar ligament. An extension from the base of the lacunar ligament will stretch over the bictinial line and the called bictinial ligament or copper ligament. One of the operations described for the management of stress incontinence is birch colpo suspension, where the surgeon will make sutures between the anterior vaginal wall and the copper's ligament. The plane of pelvic inlet is called pelvic brim. It divides the pelvis into false pelvis above the brim and the true pelvis below the brim. The boundaries of pelvic inlet starting from anterior include symphysis pubis pubic crest, pubic tubercle, pectineal line, iliopubic eminence, arcuate line, anterior border of ala of sacrum, and sacral promontory.
regarding diameters of pelvic inlets, there are anteroposterior and transversal diameters. There are three anteroposterior diameters. The true conjugate is the distance between the sacral promontory and the upper border of symphysis pubis. It measures 11 cm and it cannot be measured clinically. Obstetric conjugate diameter is the distance between the sacral promontory and the prominent projection on the inner surface of the symphysis pubis. It also cannot be measured clinically and it measures 10 cm. Diagonal conjugate is the distance between the sacral promontory and the lower border of symphysis pubis. It measures 12 cm and it can be measured clinically by introducing two fingers trying to palpate the sacral promontory, which normally is difficult to palpate. The distance between the tip of the middle finger and the area under the symphysis pubis correspond to the diagonal conjugate. Diagonal conjugate also can predict other diameters. I mean, the true conjugate is the diagonal minus one centimeter, while the obstetric conjugate is diagonal minus two centimeters. The transverse diameter of the pelvic inlet is the distance between the two first points over the iliopectineal line. It measures 13 cm. The oblique diameter extends from one sacroiliac joint to the opposite iliopubic eminence and measures 12 cm. The sacrocotyloid diameter is the distance between the midpoint of the sacral promontory to the iliopubic eminence. Pelvic cavity is a segment between the plane of inlet above. and the plane of obstetric outlet below. The plane of obstetric outlet is known as plane of least pelvic dimension. The widest area in the pelvic cavity is known as plane of greatest pelvic dimension. It is an imaginary plane from middle of posterior surface of symphysis pubis across the center of acetabulum to the junction of the second and third sacral pieces posterior. It has an anteroposterior diameter, which extends from the midpoint on the posterior surface of symphysis pubis to the junction of the second and third sacral vertebrae posterior. It measures 12 cm. The transverse diameter also is about 12 cm. However, it cannot be precisely measured as the point slides over soft tissues covering the sacrosciatic notches and obturator foramina. The area between the two planes, I mean between the greatest pelvic dimension and the least pelvic dimension, is known as mid pelvis. The pelvic outlet is a segment bounded by the plane of obstetric outlet above and the plane of anatomic outlet below. The plane of obstetric outlet is called plane of least pelvic dimension. It extends from the lower margin of the symphysis pubis through the level of ischial spines to end at the tip of the sacrum. The transverse diameter of the plane of least pelvic dimension extends between the two ischial spines and known as interspinous diameter. It measures 10.5 cm. While the anteroposterior diameter extends from the lower border of symphysis pubis to the tip of sacrum and it measures 11.5 cm. The ischial spine is clinically important. It is the plane of least pelvic dimension 
which is the narrowest plane in the pelvis. It corresponds roughly to the origin of levator eni muscles. The level of ischial spine indicates station zero. And when the presenting part reaches the level of ischial spine, internal rotation will occur. It marks the beginning of the forward curve of the pelvic axis, and it is a landmark used for pudendal nerve block. The plane of anatomic outlets extends from the lower border of symphysis pubis through the ischiopubic rimae to the ischial tuberosity, through the sacrospinous ligament to end at the lower end of the coccyx. It has an anteroposterior diameter extending from the lower border of symphysis pubis to the tip of coccyx and measure 11.5 cm and a transverse diameter extending between the two ischial tuberosities and known as bituberous diameter and it measure 11 cm. The subpubic angle is the angle formed by the two descending pubic rimae. In normal female pelvis, it measures 85 degree. And the pubic arch is the arch formed by the descending pubic rimae. Normally, the pubic arch is rounded. When a round disc of 9.3 cm diameter which represents the diameter of a well-flexed fetal head, is placed under the pubic arch. The distance between the symphysis pubis and the disc is called waist space of Morris, and it should not exceed 1 cm in normal pelvis. For this reason, the head cannot use the whole length of the anteroposterior diameter. Instead, it will use the remaining part known as the available anteroposterior diameter. When the pubic arch is narrow, for example in android pelvis, this will increase the waist space of Morse and decrease the available anteroposterior diameter. And consequently, it will push the head backwards, increasing the risk of genital trauma and making delivery more difficult. In a standing position, the pelvis is tilted forward. This will form the angle of inclination and sacral angle. Angle of inclination is the angle between the plane of inlet and the horizon. It's about 55 degrees. The sacral angle is the angle between the true conjugate and the first two pieces of the sacrum. Normally, it is more than 90 degrees. Regarding the pelvic axis, there are anatomic axis and obstetric axis. The anatomic axis is known as curve of Kairos, and it is formed by joining the axis of inlet cavity and outlet. It is uniformly curved. However, during delivery, the fetus does not follow this pathway. Instead, the fetus will follow the obstetric axis. The direction of obstetric axis is first downward and backward until the level of ischial spine. Then it suddenly directs forward.